Wells here speaking with us this evening about college uh, essay writing. Yes. And Kim being a 1970. Yeah, just kind of go like that. Graduated high school and welcome home. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you for being with us tonight. All right, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks very much again for having me back and having Steve included in this presentation, The Six Steps to Writing an Outstanding College Application Essay. Um, as Jim, uh, well, let me just step back and tell you that uh, last September I had given a program on business writing that really um, has made our company very popular because the program has proven to be very successful with workplace professionals. It's called Get a Grip on Business Writing. And when Mr. Hastings saw me do this program at the Clinton or the Big Old Library last year, he said, can you adapt this for the uh, high school uh, students? I said, absolutely. So what we're doing tonight is we're using the same six steps that we use in our business writing program. Obviously, we adapted the examples and illustrations uh, to fit college-bound juniors and seniors. But the same premise holds. Good writing is good writing because good writing is based on the six points of what we're calling the U viewpoint. And the U viewpoint, and incidentally, uh, you have a booklet, hopefully everyone has one. Jim ran these off, um, I believe, uh, or someone in his office. And I want you to relate each one of these steps that are in your booklet to what we're talking about as we go through these six steps. First of all, the whole program, whether we're talking about business writing, academic writing, or professional writing, is the same. And that is, we want writing to be based on the you viewpoint, which is to say, you need to write in the manner that you're trying to appeal to your reader based on his or her needs interests and expectations. And when you do that, you're going to find you are much more successful and you'll get much better responses from people because it really does interest them. It really does appeal to them. And the same holds true for college essay writing. You've got to tell them things that make them interested in you. They want to hear about you, the authentic you. They don't want to hear what's already on your application. You've already said that when you fill out your application. You need to convey your personality on paper, and we need to get you uh, in this program to do that. So we're going to use these six steps. All right. First of all, there are six steps that I probably am going to emphasize over and over. But briefly, let's just run through these and what they really mean when it comes to college essay writing. First of all, you need to be organized, but really, what does that mean? What that means is you have to ask yourself, why am I writing this essay to this particular college? And then whatever the answer is, is really the nucleus of your essay. And everything should focus on the answer to that question you asked yourself earlier, which is, why am I writing to this particular college? And once you have that answer down, you really have the basic theme of your essay and everything else in that essay needs to relate to that. And if it doesn't, when you go back and you edit and proofread, if it doesn't, if there's a sentence or a paragraph that doesn't relate, get rid of it. Okay. Secondly, be conversational. We want you to talk to your reader on paper or electronically. Obviously, you can't be there because you are corresponding, so you have to do and use your personality in the way that you would if you were with that person in person, okay? So you need to talk to them like you would do in a classroom in high school. And that doesn't mean you have to use slang and it doesn't mean that you have to be very casual. What it does mean is that you need to communicate in the best way possible using the best of the English language. And it doesn't mean being pretentious or arrogant or uh, pedantic. We want you to use words that you would use every day. Again, you're trying to reflect the real you on paper or electronically. OK. Third, clarity. We want you to be as specific as possible when discussing events, people, or your values. Don't leave things 
by saying, um, you know, you're talking about a particular value you have or an event, and then you refer to something else, and then you go back and you say, it really made a difference in my life once I realized that that had had an impact on me. People are going to say, well, you just told me two things. What does the it refer to? So be very clear, and whenever you're um, talking about people events, don't assume anything. Make sure the reader knows about whom or what you are discussing. All right, fourthly, be personal, okay? There's a way to be very personal, and a lot of people, both in business and in government, um, and as well as in education, they seem to get to have a writing in the third person. That's not a good thing. We don't want to hear about the school, the, the environment, the institution. What we want to hear more second person or first person. I, me, you, your, yours, because that's the way you talk. Okay, so when you are with people or when you're writing your essay, you want to make sure you use lots of personal pronouns. And there's nothing wrong with using I throughout your essay, and I'll explain that a little further later. Uh, but be as personal as you can be. And another way you can make yourself uh, really personalize your writing is to use the active voice. And we'll talk about that when we get to that point of that step. All right, the next. Uh, step is five. And I just wanted you to keep this in your head. There is, there is no guidebook, no rule book anywhere that says you must begin an essay or a business letter or any other writing in a certain way. You have many, many opportunities to use um, to grab your reader. And you only have about three or four seconds to make that reader interested in what you have to say. So you have to come up with something that's really dynamic. And that could be an open-ended question. It could be a startling statistic. It could be uh, an anecdote that's very, very interesting and, of course, relevant to what you're going to say later in your essay. But you want to grab your reader, so you have to be as creative as possible. And finally, be positive. No one wants to listen to someone being uh, a complainer or being negative or being um, a person who looks at the dim side of things. We want you to be positive right from the beginning of your essay, throughout the essay, and certainly you want to end on an upbeat note. So keep that in mind as we go along. All right, now, I have various examples I want to show you that you can use when you go to write your particular essays. And by the way, um, because it's a small crowd, if you want to ask a question, just you know, indicate that, hey, I want to ask a question. Uh, I'll be glad to answer it. Or if you want to wait to the end, that's fine too, and I'll answer your questions as we go along, or when we get to the end. All right, the first one, focus on one main message. All right, we've already talked about the question you need to ask. Why am I writing to this college? Well, here's an example. First of all, you could say right in the, uh, the beginning when you sit down at your desk, you can write that question out or type it out, and then you answer it and you say, I'm writing this essay to demonstrate I am confident, personable, and eager to be part of your college community. Everyone's going to like that because you're showing that you're enthusiastic. You really want to be part of their school. All right? Or you might say, I'm writing this narrative because I believe my skills, background, and personality are well suited for being a very enthusiastic student at your college. All right? And notice, by the way, all the personal pronouns, the you and the yours that you're seeing in each of these examples. That is very important to insert. Lots of personal pronouns. This one, I am writing this essay because I have the potential to contribute much to your college and make it an even stronger and even more diverse learning institution. Who's not going to like those? they're going to respond to that because you're showing that you sincerely want to be part of that particular college community. All right. Um, we have now on step two. All right. So we're talking about being conversational. And again, some of this would seem so simple, and it is, but people don't apply it. And they don't reinforce it by going over and over 
their writing by practicing. They, and that's really what you have to do. You have to get in, in the habit of writing a lot, whether it's short notes or letters. You need to write to become better at writing. All right. First of all, let me show this. I want, um, have I jumped ahead? Wait a minute. Oops. No. OK. First of all, I took something. And not that you're like this, but I wanted you to know that I have heard people speak in this vernacular. OK? And they will say things like, I saw your wicked awesome campus for the first time ever last fall. And I was like, wow. I belong on this awesome campus. As you will learn, the word awesome is much overused. All right? So we would urge you to drop that and use something more original. But why not just say something simple? I saw your beautiful campus for the first time last fall, and I immediately felt like I belonged there. That sounds very ingratiating. People are going to like that. It sounds like, wow, this student really wants to come to our school. All right. Now, tone of writing is so, so important. Just like you're turned off with people who use a negative tone of voice when they speak to you abrasively or negatively, condescendingly, that would turn you off. Well, in the same way, people do that. And if you need an example of that, Think of people that you've never met. You've only emailed. And you've talked to them via email. And you get this vibe that really isn't very positive. They sound critical. They sound um, judgmental and somewhat abrasive. Then you meet them and you say, is this the same person? Because the person is so nice. Well, it's obviously they aren't aware of their writing tone. You need to be conscious of your writing tone and how it is coming across to people because it is exactly like your tone of voice. The way you get a writing tone that reflects your personality is through your choice of words, the approach you use, and how you structure your sentences, which we will talk about a little later. But all of that goes into a positive writing tone. All right? Now, Here's one way you can definitely upgrade your language skills by getting rid of cliches. For those of you that might have forgotten what a cliche is, I'm sure your English teachers have reminded you of this. Nonetheless, it is a phrase or a word that is outdated. It's overused. It's tired. Okay? So you want to eliminate it. Now, I don't know, I, I guess I didn't tell you this, but we work with a number of corporations. Citrix Systems, Marriott Corporation, Walt Disney Parks and Resorts, Raytheon Corporation, to name a few. And we tell people this all the time, and I have people in the workshops, the writing workshops, say, oh my god, that's exactly how I write. That's most of my language. Because they do use as per, okay, or for your information. Or in close, please find. Those are canned terms, and you should eliminate them from your writing. Because that's not the way you talk in a conversational manner when you are speaking with your friends or your teachers. All right. So avoid things like the ones I've already mentioned. But you're, I don't know how to put this other than to say, because you are young, you want to come across as sophisticated, though young. And the way you will not come across is if you start using words like wicked and awesome way too much because people will say it sounds too juvenile. You want to get away from that. Use words that are synonyms, but not words that you would not use normally. Okay? And so a couple of these, like even though we use these in language, and you can use this in your casual conversation, clueless or cutting edge, it's best not to do this in formal writing. And your college essay definitely falls in the league of formal writing. Keep that in mind. Even though we want you to be conversational, you're still dealing with a formal piece of writing. All right, here's another thing, redundant expressions. 
It's almost comical when you think about this. Okay, people will write, I'm writing to XYZ College for the purpose of obtaining more information about tuition and course offerings and so forth. Well, it's obviously the FOR took care of that. You don't need the purpose of, okay? And it's like people who say, for your information, I'm enclosing a, a manual that describes the guidelines for our particular company. Well, that's why you're writing to me, for my information. So you don't need to say for your information. And that's not the same as the, you know, the FYI, FYI headers. You know, that's just to put some urgency on something. We understand that. But this is in the text, and it shouldn't be there. OK. Now, remember I said it was a little comical? Think about this. People go, oh, you wouldn't believe it. He had the most unique personality. And you say, when is the last time you've been to a dictionary and realized that unique is one of a kind? <laughs> it can't be compared. That's what, why it's unique. It's one of a kind. There is no more or most. All right? And by the way, and I don't often say this, but uh, you know, even it's almost funny. People will say, well, she's a little pregnant. <laughs> no, see, that's a, also a word <laughs> that is by itself also. It's, it's an a absolute adjective. That's what they're called in English. They're absolute adjectives. They cannot be compared. All right? Now, on the second column, if you just look at a couple of these, people will say, even on a college application, well, when I joined the football team, it was the first time ever I felt like I was really respected and admired. No, it was your first time. The ever is already covered, OK? And the other one I wanted to point out to you is advanced planning, because you always see this on meetings signs. And people say, well, you know, um, we're going to have a meeting. We'll do some advanced planning for the junior prom. Well, that's why you get together to plan it. See, that's ahead of the event. So there is no, and I don't know even to this day why airlines say make advanced reservations. The reservation is the advanced <laughs> part of acting. OK. <laughs> All right, so now, sports analogies. Another thing, and you would think that major corporations would not have vice presidents saying things like, well, we struck out, or we couldn't get to first base. But that's how they write. Hence, they hire Steve and me to go in there and tell them this is really inappropriate. You want to stay away from sports analogies. Again, it's OK casually, but not on a college essay. Do not use terms like that. It will reduce your writing to a juvenile status. All right, the next one, <laughs> sexist terms. We're not telling you not to use these terms. What we are telling you is only address chairman like of a department of college if you are absolutely sure it is a man or if you know and you have to make sure you know that the woman who is the head of the department is comfortable with the word chairman do not assume that it's going to be okay because many people get in big trouble for doing this because people are just turned off if you don't do your homework to check on whether it's a man or a woman, and if it's a woman, they do not necessarily want to have gender-specific titles. Okay, So you have to change these so that they will be, like in the case of fire, firefighter. Instead of policeman, we can say police officer, that type of thing. Be very careful of this. All right, next one. We want you to have the ability to give uh, nice transitions from one paragraph to another, all right? However, and I'm changing my page here so I can share with you some of the ones I wrote down. It's ubiquitous, the use of like. I even use it mistakenly. It's very hard to get rid of the word like, but it's worse when it shows up in your writing. 
Remember when I said, we want you to write like you talk? That's assuming you're using the English language in a proper context. So therefore, you would not say, the college like, you know, I'm really happy with. The like doesn't belong. Or my friends like, they know who I am. Do not do that. So drop that in the same way with the phrase, you know. If I know, then why are you sharing that with me? And that applies to writing. Do not say that in your essays. OK, all of these are, you're wasting words. And you know, you want to make your writing tight and concise. So personally, well, you're the one writing. Of course it's personally, OK? Or in my opinion, well, that's the whole point, to give your opinions in the essay. Do not use phrases like that, because it almost borders on redundancies. And then, excuse me, as you know, Oh, how many times have I seen that? Where people in a company say, as you know, we have guidelines for, well, if I knew, why, why are you telling me now? You should not use as you know. It's, uh, it's just redundant, and it's also a very poor transition. OK, when you get to the end of your essay and you want to say something about how I appreciate your time and so forth, don't start off saying, thank you in advance, I remain, and then go on. Because again, it's a canned phrase. And that is something you don't want to use. But there's a better way of saying or expressing your gratitude. And that is to say things like, uh, meanwhile, I appreciate your time and consideration. Uh, or I will be grateful for any um, examination of my essay you can give me at your earliest convenience, that kind of thing. But don't. You know, it's almost sounding presumptuous when you say thank you in advance or thanking you in advance. All right, now, uh, writing voice. Does everybody know what writing voice means? Who knows what a writing voice is? Oh, come on. I bet someone knows what a writing voice is. Go ahead. Oh, okay. It's the, the voice you use while writing. It's a voice what? Like the tower. That's, that's right. You're on, what's your name? Eli. Eli, you're on to something because it, it is very similar to what you said. It is reflective of the tone with which you write, okay? But the writing voice is your personality. When I read something that's written by you, Eli, I should be able to say, without even looking at the signature, yep, that's Eli, I can tell him, okay? Um, years ago, I was giving a um, workshop on a memoir that I wrote for my, about my mother. It was based on her journal that she had completed for me. And I kept, all I did was I edited it. And I um, you know, wanted to get her thoughts that she had expressed on paper into this book. So I called it Mum in Her Own Words. And so I was giving this workshop. And one day this lady in Clinton came up to me. And she said, you know what I like best about that? And I said, what? And she said, I could hear. Evelyn's voice every time you read an excerpt. And she says, because your mother had that personality. And she did. She had a writing voice. It was all over whenever she wrote a letter or she wrote in a journal. You could hear her saying things. And that's having your writing voice. You have to get your personality on paper or electronically, in the case of computers. All right, so find your writing voice. You will thank me one day once you've located your writing voice if you haven't already. All right. Now, step three. Again, relating to your booklet, um, we want to talk about clarity. I mentioned earlier how important it is to be specific about people, events, and projects. Okay, But what I want you all to pay attention to is grammar. And there's a reason why we emphasize grammar and punctuation. Because what you're doing as the writer is you're guiding the reader to say, slow down, stop, think about this, or I really want you to absorb my thoughts here. And the way they're going to do that is by proper punctuation that you've inserted in your essay. And so you need to 
pay strict attention. For example, this is not obviously the best example. My high school experiences have helped me become more responsible and empathetic. Consequently, my college years will help ensure I become well-rounded. What is wrong with that sentence? Go ahead, Rich. Semicolon. That's right. It needs a semicolon because we, we want you to put a semicolon after the first independent thought. Okay, you have a subject, experiences, and then your verb have helped me, and you complete the thought. In the English language, as I'm sure all of your English uh, teachers have told you, you can't run one complete thought into the next complete thought without punctuation that's proper. And commas are not good enough. They're not strong enough to do that. You need to use other punctuation. We've used um, a semicolon. Of course, you could have put a period and capitalized the C on con consequently, whatever. But if you're going to go this route, and this is correctly done, you have merged one sentence with another, and we put the word consequently, and I, I don't know if uh, your English teachers have harped on this at all, but you know, if you want to be a real smarty pants and call that a conjunctive adverb, that's fine. We simply call it transitional words, or it's an example of a transitional word. Words like furthermore, however, moreover, in addition to, they're all in the same category. And what that means is when you place them between two independent thoughts, you must use a comma after them. So it goes semicolon, transitional word, comma, then you go into the next independent thought. Okay? Now, let's talk about being personal. All right, I mentioned earlier how important it is to use personal pronouns and the active voice. But how can we add personality? Well, I mentioned I, me, you, your, yours, and so forth. All right, and I also talked about the active voice, but I want to show you what active voice is all about. All right, because in an essay, just like in a business letter, just in an academic uh, treatise, treatise or a, um, I'm trying, a white paper for business, you need to use active voice for the majority of sentences because it makes it much more concise. All right, so here's what we're going to do. First of all, the subject always performs the action in an active voice sentence. Now, here's the example that I'm using. Many colleges eagerly recruit students with diverse backgrounds. The subject, of course, is colleges. And what are they doing? Anybody? They're recruiting, absolutely. So that means that that is done correctly in the active voice. Now, if we were to turn that around, and we said uh, students with diverse backgrounds are eagerly recruited by many colleges. Now, if you count the words, from the act of the passive, you see that the passive is longer because you've added the word by, all right? And you really don't need to be writing in the passive voice in this particular sentence. It's stronger the other way. The times when the passive voice is strong is when you want to call attention to the action. Okay, that's really the only time you should be writing in the passive voice when you're writing a college essay. Um, for example, let's just say um, I'm the manager of Walgreens. This is the first idea that popped in my head, okay? And the pharmacy got robbed. So you need to let everybody know in the district, the Walgreens pharmacy district, that the pharmacy got robbed. So you would say, the pharmacy was robbed this morning. Well, that's big news, all right? And that's an appropriate use for the passive voice. Even though the pharmacy is not doing anything, you know, when you say the pharmacy was robbed, something happened to the pharmacy, all right? Just like with all the hurricanes that we've had down in Puerto Rico and the Caribbean islands, you know, many houses were destroyed by Hurricane Irma or by Hurricane Harvey, whichever one you want to use, or Maria, all right? So you want to call attention to actions with the passive, but for your purposes, most of the time, you're going to be writing in the active voice. And definitely, and keep 
this in uh, mind. The majority, that means over 50% of your sentences in your essay should be in the active voice where the subject performs the action. Keep that in mind. All right. Why is it important at all? Well, first of all, it's more personal. If I followed you around all day, I would hear you speaking in the active voice because many times that's how people talk. They, they tell what they're doing, what, where they're going, um, their conversations with their friends and family, and it's often done, excuse me, in the active voice. Okay, so it's more personal. It's more concise. Many times you will find you're going to save one or two words by writing the active voice. When you convert that to a passive voice, those two words are then, or excuse me, the sentence is two words longer. And incidentally, I didn't mention this. In the passive voice, the word by, B-Y, is either implied or it's stated outright. That's how you can tell a passive voice sentence. It's the word by is implied. Like, many houses were destroyed in Puerto Rico. So I've implied by what? Force. Many houses in Puerto Rico were destroyed by Hurricane Maria. Okay, that's why it's implied. But if I state it, then obviously you know it's a passive voice sense. Yes, go ahead. Um, so if you're writing something in our past, how do you, how do you use active voice? In, in you writing about your past? Does yeah. that, okay, like um, I went to grade school in, and you name a city? Is that what you're saying, or? For our college essays, we're most likely gonna write something in our past, so I don't know how to. Okay, um, like, give me something from your past, and I'll give you an example. Well, like something you've done in terms of sports or clubs. What did you belong to? Uh, robotics. Okay, all right. I belong to the robotics team, okay, or, um, I loved being part of the robotics team. Or um, I was, uh, no, not was. Um, I found robotics to be very healthy, okay, for me. Because what you're saying is what you did, I found, okay. If you use is, are, was, and were by themselves, just those four states of being, is, are, was, and were, then it's automatically passive voice. Okay, I am here, you are there. You see, because I'm not doing anything, you're not doing anything. So that's passive voice. Does that help? Yeah. Okay, the, the, it took me a long time to figure this out and then one of our consultants, she said, you know, you should simplify this and just say that I, is, am, was, and were when they're used alone. And that stayed with me. And that's always passive voice. But if you join them to other things, then you're changing the nature of the verb. And you may not have a passive voice verb anymore. All right. Um, and finally, more assertive. And I wrote this down this afternoon because I wanted to be clear why this is assertive. Okay. Um, if you say, let me just get to that page. Okay, here it is. In the active voice, you would say, I will enrich your college's diversity and progressiveness with my unique experiences. Okay, what will you do? You'll enrich. That's right. So you're doing something. All right, but if you turn that around, and you'll notice that sentence I just read to you had 12 words. You turn that around and you say, your college's diversity and progressiveness will be enriched by my unique experiences. That takes 12, I'm sorry, that is, um, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, how did, I did something wrong here. Okay, I, I left out a word, I think. I will enrich your college's diversity and progressiveness with my unique experiences. Then you say, um, that's in the active. But if you say in the passive, your college's 
diversity and progressiveness will be enriched by my unique experiences. Did I do something wrong? I feel like I left out a word. Did I? I would admit it if I was rich. OK. Well, I'm, I know I'm right about this, that I, I will enrich. That's written in the active voice, OK? But the other one, when you start out with your college of diversity, you know, that's putting the object first, and then you're describing it. So it makes it in the passive voice, all right? Uh, I have to double check that. I don't know why. I think I'm missing a word there. I apologize. But nonetheless, it is more assertive if you write in the active voice and um, obviously more personal, more concise. All right. Now, how personal is personal? All right. Some people are too chummy, too familiar, and they're, they, they kind of uh, alienate people because they get to be too overbearing in their essay. They're telling way too much personal information. And people are very uncomfortable with that. So you have to be very careful. All right. Look at this first sentence. It says here, this college is known to be a place where a person could succeed in many areas. Also, numerous opportunities are offered by this school to people to grow as leaders, athletes, and citizens. It sounds to me, when I'm reading that, that I'm reading out of a manual that was published by the college or some other institution. It doesn't sound like I'm talking. So if I turn this around and I say, I'm certain I will find great success at your college because of your expectations, high expectations, and diverse offerings. Additionally, I haven't any doubt I will grow as a leader, athlete, and citizen within your vibrant of, yes, vibrant student community, OK? Those are very sincere thoughts. And you're using a lot of personal pronouns, the you and the your. And it may take a little longer than up there, but it certainly sounds much more reflective of a person who is writing this in a conversational style. OK. Step five. And this talks about being creative. Again, people don't realize that they have lots of opportunities to grab people's attention. But the thing you want to stay away from is, dear college admissions director, or maybe you know the name, and you say, dear Mr. Swelling, or dear Mr. Ms. Jones, whatever. Uh, but you don't, or you shouldn't start off with, I would like to describe to you about my background while I was in high school and also when I was younger. Right away, they're going to get bored because that's not captivating them. They need something stronger. You need to either use an open-ended question, an anecdote that's really relevant to what you're going to say later in the essay, or finally, a sizzling statistic. Things like that make people pay attention. For example, I was born with a cleft palate and a cleft lip. And so I had a lot of surgeries. So looking back, I didn't do this on my college, I'll say. Um, I probably should have, but uh, I think it would have been very helpful. If you start out, you say to someone, having been born with a club pal and a club flip, my life was destined to be different. And then you go, and so it has been. Then you go into, first of all, and then you start, talk, start talking about grade school and how you, f you were so happy when you fit in with everybody. And, you know, and then maybe you're leading up to being um, very, very self-confident. So maybe a teacher gave you that self-confidence. So certainly it was true in my case. Ellen Flaherty down at Bauer School in Clinton, which was on Water Street. And I wrote an article that appeared in the item, actually. Uh, and it was about Miss Flaherty because she was absolutely terrific. And she just passed away, um, Steve, what was it? Four years ago, OK? She was 96 years old. She was absolutely incredible and never lost an ounce of her feistiness in all those years. I mean, she was just great. But I really loved her. And she made me feel like a million bucks. And I think that was a big turning point. Here's another one. After I confronted the bullies who intimidated me, I knew I could face my fear. Any, I'm sorry. I could face any fear and find 
best in my life. How strong is that? Because you're telling people that I am aware of who I am. Yeah, I was afraid before, but I'm not anymore because that was the worst thing that ever happened to me, and I face it. So college, I'm not intimidated. I know I can succeed. Okay, it's a piece of cake support uh, by comparison with what happened to you earlier. I don't know if any of you saw the film years ago, uh, and I, Jimmy and I were talking about, Mr. Hastings, excuse me, um, <laughs> we're talking about people from Clinton High who have done really courageous things and have gone on and done just marvelously at college and uh, in other areas of their life. But I, I'm reminded of the young woman who was homeless and lived, she was in Cambridge, in Boston, and she went to Harvard. Do you remember that? It's just an amazing story. Well, when she wrote about being homeless, who wouldn't pay attention to that? To me, that tells me a lot about you. You have guts, you have perseverance, you have creativity, you, you have ingenuity. Think of all the things. If you can survive that situation, that tells me a lot about you. And that's what they're looking for. They want to know about you. They already know about the cheerleader and the football team and the student council and so forth. That's already on your application. Tell them about you. Get to the essence of who you are. All right? Now, uh, whoops. OK, here we go. All right. All right. And this comes out of people asking me this. You know, people say, well, where's myself in 10 years? Well, even at my age, I can't see myself in 10 years. How would you know? I mean, wow. When you're 17, 18, 10 years, that might as well be 30. All right? And believe me, it goes that fast. All right. So you have this example. So you could start off that way. People ask me where I see myself in 10 years. And then be honest. I find that a difficult question to answer. I'm far more concerned with making sure the next four years at your college stimulate, enrich, and inspire me to be highly engaged in the world around me. I would love to meet that person who wrote that because that tells me so much right in that statement about that person or those two, two statements. Three, actually, three. Okay, see, even after all these years of doing this, you make mistakes. And you just got, you know the thing about the, the, the pass from the ex-voice? In the back of my head saying, you screwed up, you didn't give them the right thing. But you know what? That's the way it works. You, you just go on, persevere, you'll get over it. Because people aren't judging you on one aspect. They want to look at the totality of you. Okay. Having said that, let's talk about being positive, okay? Now, so many times people say, and this is, this is epidemic in business. They get to the end of the letter and they say, therefore, I want to thank you, or thank you, and I look forward to your response in the near future. Okay. One day, I did this at a workshop. I went around the room and I said, what does that mean to you in the near future? You should have heard, the, in, there were 20 people. They said, three days, five days, um, 48 hours. I mean, they were all over the map with this. It was unbelievable. And it's like, and here we are trying to say in the near future. It's so vague. You don't want to use terms like that. All right, so we're going to show you how to do this. Okay, do not use these words in your essay, okay, because they are showing me, for starters, and showing college officials that you're not really confident. I was in sales for a number of years in publishing, so I, we were taught never say I think or, uh, you know, maybe, no, you're selling the product and the pr product is you. You have to sell yourself. You are certain, okay, that you will add to the college's diversity. Or you are certain that the college offerings really mesh with your goals for a career, all right? So stay away from things. And again, 
soon. What does that mean? Two hours from now, next week? I don't know, because no one's defined that. Again, two weeks, I hope. I hope you'll consider my essay, and I hope you'll consider me for my, you sound whiny. No, you want to say, I know I am going to contribute so much to your college once I'm there. I can't wait to start to be part of your um, college community. All right, and then again, this is a very vague term. Several could be four, five, ten, who knows, okay? And then when you start thing, saying things like sort of, mm -mm. in writing you have to be specific. Because a friend of mine says specific is terrific. And he is right. All right. Now, look at this for a minute. These, I have three examples here to show you where you can really convey your self-confidence. The first one, I'm determined, that's a great word, to be actively involved in my collegiate life at your college or at your university. Determined, okay? Here, excuse me, here's another one. Based on my personal experiences up to this point and the family values I hold, I can easily picture myself being part of your college community. That says so much about where you've come from, who your family is, and what you were raised to be in terms of a person. People are going to say, this says a lot about this individual. And finally, the, again, you're not being conceited. Forget that. When you say, I know, you're being honest, confident, enthusiastic. I just know. And you do. I just know with my background, personal interests and academic achievements, your university is a perfect fit for me. I would eagerly read the rest of that essay. All right? Obviously, you wouldn't put that in the first sentence or in the beginning of your essay. But I would want to go back and say, wow, this young person really has a lot on the ball. I'm going to reread this. All right? And that's what you want to do. Good writing makes people want to go back and say, wow, this is really good. It's very interesting. All right, now, before I close, I want to tell you a couple of things, OK? Remember I said earlier, um, you're selling yourself, and you want to be authentic, so you have to get that across. And even though this person may be twice your age and may have three degrees, OK, you are still going to write why you want to go to that college. But you have got to make that essay appeal to that person, whether it's a man or a woman, no matter what their position at the college, say, this is terrific. I, I, I have to share this with somebody. Because this person sounds so enlightened, so much fun, so personable. Who wouldn't want that kind of person? OK, now, a couple other things. Just because I know, how many of you are about ready to um, start the college application process? I mean, very soon. Anybody? OK. Are you graduating this year or next year? This year. OK. I just want to tell you a couple things, which is a credit to Clinton High School, actually. Um, but I think it's well served. I might have said this the last time, so forgive me for those of you who heard this before. Um, my sister Karen, who's a few years older than me, she didn't, she was like a ballet dancer, really into dance, loved it, okay? Studied it for years. So she waited and waited until the last of the spring and when she was graduating from high school, she finally decided she wanted to go to college. So my father said to her, why don't we get on Springfield College? And uh, really no formal interview set up or anything. So he and my mother, my father and mother, drove my sister down. And the guy came out, the admissions director, and he said, uh, and ironically, his name was Krauss, and this is my grandmother's maiden name. It's really kind of funny. But anyway, he, he comes out and he says to my parents, um, well, you know, the admissions are closed for the fall. We've accepted everyone. He said, but why don't I talk to Karen? So in she goes. And my mother and father told me later they could hear laughing and just a lot of, you know, pep coming out of that room. And so they, 
the guy came out. Now, mind you, he had already said they have everyone for the freshman class that they need. And he said, I don't know how we can not take Karen. And she got in. Now, here's the upshot. And she said, oh. And I remember saying me. And she's the only one in my family who ever was on the National Honor Society. OK, I certainly wasn't. But anyway, maybe we, anyway, we won't go there. But anyway, um, later on, you know, and she continued to say this. Oh, she said, I'm not college material. I don't know if I can do this. And we'd all say, you're terrific. You're very studious. Turns out, the last year at Springfield College, it was the first year they gave out what is called the Frank Stanley Beverage Award, and it's voted on by all faculty and all students. To the, the one student at Springfield College who exemplifies mind, body, spirit. That's her motto. And she was selected. Now, mind you, this guy, how perceptive of him to think my sister had some gifts to share. And she did and she does. And the other thing, um, this is more personal. When I went out, I went out to college, a place called, in those days, Mankato State College. No one ever heard of it. If they lived in New England, there were very few, I shouldn't say no one, but very few people had ever heard of it, OK? And then it became Mankato State University. It's 14,000 kids. It's huge, OK? And I went there. And I thought, God, you know, first of all, I want to go to a small college. Well, after my first year, I loved it so much that I went back, OK? Well, my dad had graduated from Harvard University, but I knew I definitely wasn't Harvard material, OK? Uh, <laughs> a look at my grades would prove that. So around my sophomore year, I said to my father, are you disappointed that I didn't go to a big name school? And he said to me, and I, I have never forgotten this, he said, it doesn't matter where you go to learn, it matters that you learn wherever you go. And I would wish the same for all of you. Good luck and thank you. OK. And if anybody wants to see any of our books, they're here. And Steve, did you give out the cards? OK. He has uh, business cards. If you have any questions now, I'll entertain them. Or if you want to um, email me your questions, you'll have my business card. You can do that as well. Anybody questions? OK. I just want to say thanks. Welcome, Jim. Thank you.